Hey what's up hello welcome to or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Emma and if you're not new here my name is still Emma. Today I'm coming at you guys with probably the most highly requested video on my channel which is what am I even calling this? A guide to everything you need to know before moving into university. Probably about two or three weeks ago now I asked on my Instagram like in a little story thing what you guys wanted to know university related or videos I could do before I move out. So you guys sent in a whole of stuff and I was like you know what let's just put all of this into one video. So I didn't really want to make this whole sit down thing but I guess I kind of had to to intro it and stuff. There's like 10 questions I think but I'll go into detail on all of them because I feel like this is a video that I really needed when I was coming to university so hopefully you can take something from this. And also while I'm here this is the last video that I will be filming in this room as a sit down video. Isn't that not crazy? So I'm hoping to turn this video around and get out to you guys by Saturday which means when this video comes out I won't even be in this room anymore today's Wednesday so yeah crazy I've tried to put these in as much of a logical order as I could so um I guess we'll start first question and I feel like this is one that a lot of people worry about it's not something that you need to worry about so let me just touch on this cost slash how to pay for uni if you are a New Zealand resident you will be introduced this beautiful thing called StudyLink. So, StudyLink is run by the New Zealand government and it, it is a way that students can access interest-free loans or allowances if that is what they're eligible for. If you're a New Zealand resident and you're starting uni, you will get that first year fees free, which saves you, depending on what your course is or your degree, it can save you like a lot of money. So for me personally, I think it saved me like seven grand, which is amazing. But that's just to cover your first year to kind of get you started. And don't think, oh yeah, cool, fees free, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do a year and then I'm gonna quit. No, you have to finish your degree for it to count. So don't try out smart the system. So under StudyLink, there are two that I'm aware of that you can apply for. So there's a student allowance and a student loan. So the allowance is money that you, if you are eligible for, you would get and you don't have to repay it once you've finished your degree or whatever. If your parents um, earn under a certain income or you don't live at home, or there's a few criteria you have to meet in order to be eligible for the student allowance. And if you are eligible, hold on, let me get the facts up here. After tax, you are eligible for $237.90 per week, which you don't have to repay. So that's to go towards living costs. And with this, I think you do have to live away from home and like not be like married and stuff like that. So there are a few criteria to meet, so definitely look into that. And the other option is a student loan. So if you are not eligible for a student allowance, you are eligible for a student loan to cover your living costs. So this is a maximum of $239.76 per week, and I think that's after tax. There are a lot of factors for each type, so if you want to look into it, definitely do look into it. Um, I found it wasn't that hard to try and understand, but like you log in using your Realme login and blah blah blah. Like it'll make sense once you get in there. Don't take what I'm saying too seriously because their rates and stuff and what you're eligible for, they do change that quite regularly. Like it's changed since I applied. For that you apply online at studylink.govt.nz, I think that's the website. Don't quote me on this either, but I'm pretty sure I applied on Boxing Day last year. So the um, cutoff for that, if you're a new student, yeah, it isn't for a while yet. So get onto it, but don't stress about it. The next thing is what to bring to uni when you're moving in. It was kind of hard to narrow it down because obviously there are a lot of things you need, but the kind of key things I've got here is obviously bed sheets, your pillows, your duvet, etc. Because if you don't have a bed, like bed sheets, where are you going to sleep? If you're not planning on going home anytime soon, pr bring clothes for all climates. It's like summer, winter, whatever. A bag, like a school bag or a shoulder bag or a laptop bag or something for carrying your books to class. An over-the-door clothes horse. I'll put a video on here of the one I have. It's from Briscoe's, cost me like 13 bucks. It wasn't even on special, but it has been amazing this year. I don't hang it over my door but I hang it over like my heater and it's amazing. Also I used to hang it on my curtain rod but the curtain rod started to like bend and I don't think that was very good but anyway. And I also have a printer here which I found personally quite useful and a lot of people have also used it as well. They have a printer here like I don't know about other unis but they have one here we can pay to use but it was, was going to work out the same price for me to buy a printer and buy the ink and the paper myself. So I just went with that and it's been good because it saves you time not having to go anywhere anyway. If you can justify a printer, I would recommend that. Things you didn't get told before moving into uni that you wish you knew. Here at Waikato University, they have a Facebook page where you can buy secondhand textbooks. And if you're not aware, textbooks are expensive. Expensive. They are so expensive. So if you can, if your uni or your polytechnic or whatever have like a place where you can buy secondhand books and resources, definitely try and ask like an older student and find out if that's a thing because it can end up saving you a lot of money. I haven't bought any textbooks new this year and it saved me quite a lot. And then obviously when you sell them, you can sell them back on that, you can sell them off on that same page and basically get your money back, which is 
awesome. Also, when you get given your initial timetable, I don't know, obviously I can only speak really for Waikato University, I don't really know what other unis do, but for us, your timetable you get given before you move in, it's available online, it doesn't have your tutorials on it, it's just the lectures. I remember looking at it and being like, I have so much free time. No, you'd have to have tutorials in there somewhere as well, which you sign up for once uni actually begins and you'll get told how to do that. Moving in day tips and tricks. I have two points here. Pack your stuff in boxes or suitcases so you don't have to literally bring in like all these handfuls of stuff and don't bring the kitchen sink. You don't need as much as you think. I've learned that this year that I have so much stuff that I don't use back home in Auckland and I'm going to go home and have a massive clean out. Don't bring everything, just bring the necessities because the rooms here aren't massive. The next thing is organising your room. So I'll show you guys kind of how I organise my room now. Okay guys, I have Morgan behind the camera for this part. Is obviously another day because I'm wearing a different outfit but I'm going to quickly show you guys how I organize my room obviously when you move into a room it won't be the same sort of shelving situation as this even if you are at Waikato University that all the room like Morgan's room is different to yeah. mine this is like food and medication stuff this is my jeans or pants this was a basket here which was kind of like my cups and plates and stuff undies pads bras socks this is just full of random stuff which doesn't really have a home, like board games. This has got activewear in it, and then obviously you can see this is random stuff displayed. This has like gym stuff in it, it's like stationery, and then I have like merch stuff that was, was down there, but now it's all at home. And then this has t-shirts, and this has shorts, and then winter obviously isn't a short, so I would put like scarves and stuff and beanies in there. This is like jackets and jumpers, and my washing basket lives down there with my towels. And then in this little annoying cupboard, I have my toiletries and then I have this random stuff. It's really deep too. Yeah, it goes actually all, all the way, way back. back. Also, little tip, my mum's like, why do you hang your key on your door handle? It's because you see it when you go out so you don't lock yourself out. That's a good tip. I should have thought about that the whole year, but... You don't do that. No. It's just usually... Right Even better, if you've got your door open, like hooked back... And you put your key there. Put your key here, so if you accidentally shut the door... You're not locked out. You're not locked out, yeah. So, that's all. Alright. Back to the video. How to make the halls feel like home. So if you're like someone who's prone to being homesick or under 18 or whatever, your bedding. If you like your bedding at home, obviously the beds here are single beds. So if you don't have a, if you have a double bed or something at home and you can't bring the duvet from home, then find like one that's like a similar kind and have a photo wall. Love this. I can look back and be like, wow, memories. And then have good smells. I know that sounds really weird, but you can't burn candles here. But if you have like some of those, what are they called? Like the... Thing with the oil with the sticks in it and like you turn them over then those things and incense isn't the right word something that just makes it smell like you and then it'll feel more homey things that surprise you about uni expectations versus reality people stealing food people will steal your food out of the fridge write your name on it keep tabs on it you have to wear jandals in the shower we don't have to but most of us choose to. It feels a little bit like school camp not gonna lie but we love it we embrace it. People here are alcoholics. Some of them are. That's totally fine, none of my business, but just be prepared that there is a drinking culture around universities. And you never get alone time. <laughs> you never get alone time. I mean, I have alone time now because Rachel isn't here. Rachel's my bestie, she lives behind this wall. But yeah, when everyone's around, you don't really get alone time. There's always people knocking on your door, coming to say, hey, it's great, but just prepare yourself for that. How to be social slash make friends in the halls. And at this point I was hoping I'd be able to put in a skit about how me, Morgan, Taylor and Rachel all became friends, like reenacting it from what happened earlier in the year, but that didn't happen and Rachel's also like not sick but she's lost her voice. So um, basically long story short, I met Taylor because I went to school with her and then Rachel was also on our floor and then Taylor and Rachel became friends. Then they came and knocked on my door and said, hey, want to come to dinner, which is how I became friends with Rachel. And then during O Week, Rachel was going somewhere with Morgan who she'd met with through another friend that she'd made through someone she went to school with and then I met Morgan that way and we bonded over a dog so anything is possible <laughs> connections get you a long way in university but since we didn't do the skit I've included a couple of pointers in there for you guys so listen up be friendly be humble invite people to come to dinner and your vibe attracts your tribe what happens during O Weeks? So I personally wasn't here for O Week. I also wasn't 18 during O Week. So even if I was here, I wouldn't be able to go out to the like town when everyone else went out. Not that I probably would have because... Uh. So if you are over 18, they have themed nights. They're like toga parties, foam parties, jungle parties. All sorts of different themed dress up things basically. And you can jump on the shuttle bus, go into town, party all you like 
catch the bus home, catch an Uber home, whatever. And that's awesome. They also have events on on campus, so you can like take campus tours. It's basically a week we have no classes. You can get familiar with the um, with the campus, make friends. It's actually a pretty cool time. I wasn't here for it though because I was getting my wisdom teeth pulled out. From what I've heard, it was a good time. Jump in workload difficulty from year 13 to uni. I would say there is a higher workload, but with that, it is more interesting. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed this year way more than like this is okay. I know 2020 has been a bit of a year, but this hands down has been the best year of my life. Just putting it out there. There is a high workload, but it is more interesting because theoretically you should be studying something you're interested in. Although there's a high workload, it doesn't feel like there is because you're enjoying it more. You don't have a teacher, like a teacher per se, but you still can contact your lecturers and your tutors if you need help. There are a lot more readings than I thought. I remember my first reading I was given, I was told to read chapter one of a textbook and I was like, I think she meant page one, so I read the first page and then I went to class and realised that she meant the whole chapter, which was like 20 something pages, so uh, that was cool. Yeah, as I said, it's easier, it's more enjoyable, well not easier, but it's easier than I thought it was going to be and it's probably because it's more enjoyable. The last question here is more things that are just related to people who are coming to Waikato University next year or even tech. Things to do in Hamilton because I know we have a bit of a reputation here for being boring with nothing to do. So I'm here to... Uh, dismiss that little uh, rumour because I love Hamilton. You guys know it. I love it here. So Hamilton Gardens, Hamilton Lake. I didn't realise Hamilton had a lake. I thought they had a river and that was it. But no, they have a, they have a lake and it's beautiful. It's called Lake Rosadoa and it's on the other side of town, like over past the city. And it is beautiful. You can't swim in it or anything like that, but it's just nice. It takes like an hour to walk around it and it's beautiful. There's like a playground if you're into that. I don't know. It's kind of fun. There's the base, you can go shopping, there's lots of cute cafes such as Coffee Culture which is like five minutes from uni, like driving. And that's like a big one that a lot of people go to. I've been there once before, my friend Rachel, she's obsessed with it, she goes all the time. In town there is Tempin Bowling, there's escape rooms, there's obviously town if you're into that. There's also the river so you can go for like, you can walk down to the river basically at like any point and like walk along, there's like a footpath, it's really really pretty. And then out of town a little bit, like probably half an hour from the uni here, there's this walk that's like 1300 steps up with an amazing view over like Huntley around Hamilton sort of area which is called the Hakramata walk and that is amazing I thought it once with Owen and his parents and it was really hard there's like a sign at halfway where it's like you're halfway I thought that that was the end and I was like <gasps> and also here we have the perk of being I think it's like 45 minutes from Raglan from here so yeah I haven't actually been there this year because I just haven't really had however time but yeah 45 minutes out to Raglan um like a beach place if you're from Auckland and go to Sound Splash you'll know exactly where that is yeah that's basically what there is to do in Hamilton that hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit if you do have any questions feel free to pop them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you otherwise if there's something you want clarification on also chuck it down below or DM me on Instagram I'll answer that. Good luck to everyone who is starting university next year. If you made it this far in the video, please comment what university you're going to and what you're studying. I'm curious to know what you guys are up to. But yeah, stay safe, stay well, make someone smile, and I'll see you in my next video. Hey, what is up? <clears throat> what was that? I don't need to stand up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing really good with the angles. <laughs>